friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Monday, April 3rd, and Intonation School is now in session. <laughs> Man, did I ever, ever unintentionally set off a firestorm in regards to this mandolin and the fretboard. So I'm going to attempt to clear the air I really thought my last vlog on Saturday was going to do that, and obviously it just made it worse. And I don't really get it. So what I've decided is I'm taking way too much for granted. People do not, absolutely 100% do not understand intonation. I can tell that from the comments. Get a different fretboard, send it back. You can't make the world's finest mandolin if you're using an inferior product. Don't use that piece of ebony. You know, just on and on and on. Let me rest assured, and if I can't say this any plainer than I'm gonna say it right now, the fretboard I'm going to use is absolutely perfect. Perfect. It is 100% perfect. The intonation will be 100% perfect. Gilchrist, Gibson's Lloyd Lore, Stradivari himself could not make it any better. And I'm going to prove to you why and show you why here in just a minute. Bear with me. But we need to understand a few things first. So you understand, the first question is, why don't you just make your own fretboard well, I did that on the first half dozen mandolins, and I can do that on this one, but it's a waste of time. It's a complete, absolute, 100% waste of time. The end product that I make, at best, is almost as good as this. At best, it's never as good as these factory-made fingerboards because you're measuring in thousands of inches from right here and you're measuring right down this and you have to measure in thousands of inches. Now, for anybody who thinks they can do that, you obviously don't know what we're talking about. You can't do it accurately. You just can't. Not to the thousandth of an inch. You could do it with a CNC machine. You could do it with things like that. And that's why these are made with CNC type machines and or at least things that are set up permanently where they always cut them exactly the same. There's no duplication error with a store-bought fingerboard. When you make them yourself, you kind of have to guess the thousands because your eye isn't good. Even as good as I think my eye is, it's not good enough to guess thousands. And, and when I say guess, that's all I can do is guess my thousands. I get under a microscope, I take the finest exacto tip blade I've got, and I guess the thousands. Because guess what? A ruler doesn't measure in thousands. A ruler at the best, and I have one ruler that measures in hundreds. But guess what? There's 10 marks in between each of one of those 100 marks. Now there's 100 marks in an inch. And there's 10 marks in between those. Try to guess that good and make your own fretboard. I did it on the first six, and they were fine. Close enough, nobody would ever be able to tell. But it takes all day to make one. So why make one when I can buy one for little or nothing? 25 bucks, I got one. Okay, that's the first problem. You really do not understand thousands if you think you can make one just as accurate. You just don't. You just don't understand it. The second thing is, and I'm going to measure this right now. I have, I promise you I have not measured this accurately, but I'm going to do it right now just to prove my point here. We're going to measure exactly how far off the scale is from what people call perfection. And when I say call perfection, I'll explain to you in a minute that it's really just a rule of thumb so you'll understand, a rule of thumb is, well, it can be this way or that way a little bit, you know. A rule of thumb is just a very close approximation. And that's what we're gonna be showing you here. But I'm gonna show you that by that rule of thumb, we're only off just a fraction of a hair. So let me show you that. 
Okay, if I line up the 15th fret with the body here, which again is basically a rule of thumb, it really is. And even if I line that up, right now I've got it lined up over the dead center. But guess what? If you're measuring in thousands of inches, that could be three thousandths of an inch that way, or it could be two thousandths of an inch that way. No, you can't tell for sure with your eye. You think you can, but you can't. Not that detailed. All right, so I have it lined up right on that body marker. So I could be off by a few thousandths one way or the other. You have to understand that first. Even though it's lined up my eye perfectly, I'm still probably off by several thousandths of an inch one way or the other. I have no idea which way. Okay, the only thing, just so you know, with this fingerboard, the only thing, did you hear me say only thing I would have changed is I would have brought this um, this black, I would have brought it up about another, oh, sixteenth of an inch, if that, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. I could make a nut this wide and it wouldn't look horrible. I just don't personally like them that wide. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to, you know, when I put my purfling all the way around all this fancy stuff, I'm just gonna return my purfling right here. That'll narrow it down. It'll actually look nicer anyway because I'll 45 the corners and it'll look like a feature. It'll actually be finer than most mandolins because most mandolins won't even have that feature. So, and turning a, what could be a small, tiny problem, which is, it isn't even a big problem, it was just disappointing to me in that original video because I didn't plan it that way, is that I'm just gonna turn it into a really nice feature. So you'll never even know it up here. This is gonna look better than normal. Back here, now keep in mind, I've got this lined up by eye as best I can, okay? Back here, when you measure this out, and I'm just measuring by eye again, because that's all you got. You don't have anything better than that. When I measure this out, 13 and 15 sixteenths measures right here, about. Okay? Now, if you can see this, there's a mark back here. This first mark back here was the rule of thumb mark. This is where it came out to. Okay? Look at the difference there. Can you see the difference there? I hope it shows up, because I want you to see it. There's hardly any difference. I would say, I'm just guessing right now, but we're gonna measure it. I'm gonna guess that that difference is about 20 thousandths of an inch. That's the thickness of four sheets of thin notebook paper, if that. But we're gonna measure it just to prove it. All right, so let me set this on zero first. You can see it's probably setting on zero. All right, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna, of course not, I'm doing this by eye, so I could even be off a couple thousands just by eye. And I really, the, even these glasses aren't close up glasses enough. So I'm gonna get this big magnifying glass out here where I can see it a little bit better and try to get the most accurate measurement I can get. I'm trying really hard to get a good accurate measurement. It's very difficult to do. The most accurate I can come up with is 23 and a half thousandths. So 23 and a half thousandths is what I actually measured as close as I can, again, by eye. So I can be off two or three thousandths one way or the other. 23 thousandths of an inch would be about five pieces of notebook paper, roughly, pressed tightly together the thickness of that. That may sound like a lot. It's not very much. Okay, now the next thing you need to know that is that that is just a rule of thumb measurement. Because first of all, when you line, you, you mostly, it's just a rule of thumb that you want your bridge to line up between those two points of the, on the, on the F hole there, those two inside points. You want your bridge to line up there. Okay, <clears throat> well, first of all, I've seen hardly any instruments where they line up perfectly. 
yeah, they line up approximately, yeah. They're in the ballpark, yeah. Do they line up perfectly? Not usually. Go look at yours and see if you think it's perfect. It's probably not, it's probably off. The next thing I can tell you is that it's not uncommon at all when you're setting intonation based on the 12th fret, when you note it at the 12th fret, it's not uncommon for any instrument to move a bridge eighth inch this way or an eighth inch that way. That's 125 thousandths. <laughs> it's not uncommon at all to move a bridge that much to get the intonation correctly or the saddle or whatever we're dealing with. On mandolins, it's the whole bridge and the saddle. My point is that part of this, of the building, is not black and white 100% perfect on a handmade instrument. It can't be. Stradivari, Gilchrist, the very best Lloyd Lohr mandolin, all of them are going to be slightly different no matter who built it. They couldn't do it any better than I've done right here. In fact, I doubt seriously they'd do it any better at all. Coming out within 20 thousandths of an inch of perfection is pretty small try to measure 20 thousandths on a standard ruler, you can't do it. This ruler is measured in, measured in sixteenths. You know, how, you know how many thousandths are in a sixteenth? About 62 and a half thousandths. Okay, I'm only 23 thousandths off. And that's just by eye. Who knows if that's even accurate? I might only be off by 15 thousandths. Okay, so there's all of that to consider first. The only way you could improve this, black and white guarantee you, the only way you can improve this is if you made every single part, every single part, neck, top, sides, everything, on a CNC machine and had some sort of a alignment tool that aligned everything perfectly every time. That's the only way you could improve it. It's the only way. I don't have that. I made every single part by hand. Every single part is off by a few thousands here, a few thousands there. Every single part. Yet when I put them all together, including this fretboard, which is slightly different than some previous fretboard that I used somewhere. I have no idea which mandolin that fretboard would have been used on. My point is, it's slightly different. Doesn't matter, because the 12th, the 15th fret will still be on the body line. The 12th fret will still set the intonation to the bridge. Every single thing will be perfect. And the most critical ear out there the very most critical ear out there would not be able to tell there's anything wrong at all because there won't be anything wrong. It'll be perfect. I don't know if that explains it any better or not. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm mad. I'm not mad. I'm trying to get across that there is a definite misunderstanding about intonation and about building instruments in general. It's not absolute perfection on anything. And if you think it is, you're wrong. That's why the title of my videos don't say the most perfect mandolin ever built by a human. They say the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human. And, 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 and again, I want to stress 1000%. That is only a goal. That's not, I'm not saying this mandolin is the most perfect mandolin ever built by a human. I'm saying I'm striving to make it the most perfect mandolin ever built by a human. And the reason I say human in that title is because you could do this with a CNC machine and it would be perfect. <laughs> do you get it now? This, there's nothing wrong with this. And I, I'm going to close with this. The most critical ear out there, the most picky person I know, and one of those people is my brother, the most picky person wouldn't be able to tell anything about this. They would go, wow, that's perfect. And in addition to that, 
That most picky person, if they brought their instrument here, I almost guarantee you 100%. I'm going to say 99, 97%, 97 to 99% of all of those picky people bringing their instruments here, 97 of them, I can improve their intonation a little bit. Maybe just one string, but I guarantee you, I can improve it a little bit. I've only seen a few instruments in my whole career of doing this where I couldn't improve their intonation. I've actually had, and I'm not exaggerating for this video, I've actually had people start crying when I've set their instrument up perfectly and they started playing it because they can hear such a difference. And they've been playing it wrong for so many years. I've actually had it. I was at a jam, a live jam up in Warsaw, Missouri. I'm pretty sure it was the name of the town. It started with a W. I think it was Warsaw, Missouri. We were at a restaurant. This guy said, I heard about you that you can do amazing things with instruments that you, you know, and he says, this one has never played right. And I remember it was a Weber Mandel, and I'm pretty sure. And he says, it's never played right. I just don't know what to do with it. It doesn't sound right. I pick it up, I play on it a little bit, instantly. I could tell the intonation wasn't right, just instantly. So I just took a few seconds, moved his bridge about a quarter of an inch, I'll have to tell you. I'm not lying to you, the man started crying. He couldn't believe how good his instrument sounded. Now you would think that anybody would know, notice that, but people don't. People don't understand this process. I don't fault him for not realizing it. I'm sure the best musician out there does because they don't have any ability to forgive anything. <laughs> I, that's just the truth. If you're going to do this as a, for a living, you need to get a thick skin because you are in for trouble with those really picky musicians. But seriously, folks, there is nothing, not one single thing, not this much, See that? See that right there? There's not that much of a problem with anything I'm doing here. Not that much. There is no need to get a different fretboard. There is no need to change anything. The only thing I'm going to do different is make a feature right here and extend, and everything else is perfect. Even if I had a different fretboard, this might not have worked out that close. It might have worked out 40 thousandths off with a different fretboard. Do you understand that now? I hope you do because there's nothing exact. I, I could be off this 23 thousandths because I didn't slide the top that way enough. I'm mean, serious. I, it, it could easily be that. <laughs> I've probably got everybody mad at me now and everybody's probably saying, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm passionate about this and I want you to understand this is not a problem. No, it is not the most perfect mandolin ever built by a human. It is the world's finest mandolin attempted to be built by a human. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> School's over, by the way. <laughs>